Uh, it's now, uh, it's Wednesday and all is well. And we'll start the meeting uh, oh, there she is. as, as our chairman see. walks in. <laughs> Oh, good grief. We're just talking about you. Um, are you going to have a, do you have a computer? Do you, do you type on, oh. I'm all right. Kids good? Yeah, I just dropped them off. Wednesdays are tough for me. That's what's been a problem. I can't do Wednesdays. Oh. Like, they're at my kids at Scouts. I just dropped them off. So, to give you guys this. Oh. I gotta get back over there. Okay. Oh, I have the mic on, just so you know. <laughs> oh. No, I can't. Never? Um, I, after, um, I think it's May or June. I have to look at my. Um, but then it'll happen again in the winter. Um, yeah, um, I can, like, after um, it's probably in May. Um, but then again in the winter, this will, I'll have the Monday. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we he did send them out about four o'clock today. I, I was at home. I met yeah, sure. two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Did you guys read it? it I, yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Is it good? It's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Everybody all right with accepting it now? Second. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 To see your kids? Do you have to get back? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. To you, or red light? What's the super easiest? Oh, there's three. Oh, yeah. I'll turn. I'll go around the corner so you can face them. Excuse my back, baby, if you don't mind. Okay. All right, I'm going to repeat myself. Oh, thank you. Okay. My name's Joe Paul, uh, 18 Florence Ave, and I'm a commissioner on the Historical Commission. My name is Debbie Opperman. I work for the Office of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Holyoke, and I'm the staff liaison to the Historical Commission. Hi, I'm uh, Rich Alstrom um, on the Historical Commission. I'm the chair, uh, and I live at uh, 215 Madison here in Holyoke. Thank you for coming. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Amy, do you have a uh, want to start the conversation? Um, well, okay. Well, um, in our last meeting, I think you might remember, Debbie, um, 
I, I had, um, before the meeting, contacted you and um, Richard um, with questions about what your role could be, um, like uh, in terms of CPA work, for example. Um, would you be able to look at the nature of the proposed work of the applicants and, and be able to say whether it's appropriate for historic um, preservation to help advise the committee members? That's one question. And um, the other was, uh, could the Holyoke Historic Commission consider taking on the role of maybe overseeing the uh, historic rehabilitation projects to ensure that they meet U.S. Secretary of the Interior standards for historic rehabilitation. I actually brought along the giant manual there. Um, and possibly review contractors and vendors for projects to ensure their quality. Um, let's see what else. And then I had brought up the question of preservation, uh, uh, the question of term restrictions for non-acquisition projects that are historic in nature, um, and whether a Holyoke Historic Commission could hold restrictions for those. Um, so that's just to get us started. And I think you remember that, Debbie, and you were going to let us know whether that would be possible. Right. I should begin by telling you that um, in my work with the Historical Commission, uh, I not only work for the Historical Commission, but I also work at the directive of the Director of the Office of Planning and Economic Development. So the way this happened um, time-wise is these items, um, and I'm referring to a uh, part of an email that Amy wrote, so I want to look, keep looking down at this paper. That's what I've been looking at, too. <laughs> I referred to these items. I, they were broached um, briefly at the last Historical Commission meeting which was February 15th, 14th? Second Monday of the month. Right. I'm sorry, the 11th maybe? Maybe the 11th, yeah, I'm sorry. 11th. Second Monday of the month, it broached quickly, and the only reason they were just broached and not discussed in their entirety is because, like I said, I also needed the, um, <coughs> need to have a discussion with the director of the Office of Planning and Economic Development. So where I stand today is I finally had, was able to have a discussion with the director, Marcos Marrero, for those of you who aren't familiar with the department. We discussed this on Monday. So all I can say is I know what he's thinking, but it has not been discussed with the full historical commission right now. And our next meeting is, uh, again, the second meeting of March, uh, second Monday of March. So I think that's, again, the 11th of March. So I'm not sure how to proceed. I just wanted to make it very clear that the entire Historical Commission, we have not discussed this in its entirety because I usually wait for the direction of the director of the department first. He... We didn't talk about hours, but he felt that the scope of work that is in this memo from Amy is reasonable for the Historical Commission, with the exception there was one item that he did not think was appropriate for us to carry out, and that was um, a Historical Commission review of contractors and vendors for projects to ensure their quality. Mm -hmm. It did not feel comfortable with that and didn't think that was our role. The rest he felt, was appropriate and a role for the Historical Commission, but he also is aware that this was not discussed entirely with the Historical Commission. And your next meeting is March 11th, you said? Yes. yes. So if I can say that's uh, partly why Joe and I are here this evening is to begin to have a face with um, the CPC um, to begin to, and it may not be Joe and I uh, to continue, but uh, to make our, the Historical Commission available for questions. Um, I did review the letter that Amy had, had written, and um, uh, Debbie and I discussed it a number of times uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, just briefly, because uh, we did have a, 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 a cursory discussion at our last uh, commission meeting about uh, the issues that have arisen in terms of how the historical commission should uh, be part of this process. So we would need to um, bring it to our next meeting to go through it more f uh, fully. Um, the one thing that we did cover briefly um, was the same concern 
or concerns that came up about the Historical Commission having um, overview of ongoing projects that we didn't have the, the expertise, time, um, or ability really to be able to do that, and that perhaps was not our, our place. And I would also add that um, one part of this that um, some of you may be familiar with, we as a, a municipality are eligible for local technical assistance from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And you met Shannon Walsh, I believe the last time I was here. Um, that is one area where we can rely on technical assistance because I think, I forget how many hours we get yeah. per project per year. But those are all things that the Historical Commission has to consider because it is, it's true, most of, the, of us on the Historical Commission don't necessarily feel that we have all the expertise we need to make some of these judgment calls. Um, and that's where the Planning Commission could come in. So I just wanted to be mm -hmm. clear again that there are resources, but we need to discuss this as a commission. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Oh. Go ahead, Mike, are you done? No. Oh, well, I, it, 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 as it stands, you're thinking that your next meeting on the second Monday of March will be that day when you begin the discussion among the historical commission about the what extent do you want to get involved in, in, this, in our process? Is that the is that Yes, the day? yes. It's, it was going to be on the agenda. Rich and I had mm -hmm. discussed it briefly, I, and I'm not. I'm never sure how far we'll get actually with the item, but yes. We so intend to take it up. That's correct. Absolutely. That's correct. Um, okay. Okay. I, I just have a quick question about you mentioned Sharon. Is it Walsh? The, from Shannon Pioneer Walsh. Va Shannon Walsh from Pioneer Valley Planning. Would she work with you or would she work with us or, or both or how does that work? It, it's all up how you would like that set up. In some communities, she works directly with the Historical Commission. In other communities, I, well, I should say other communities that I know of, not necessarily Shannon, but whoever their resource person may work with the CPC. Uh, it's all how it's I, yeah and she came to one organized. of our meetings yes um, i know that i wasn't right. here for that so i yeah. didn't know what, but what um, her, a lot of uh, what so far say? what i've learned from her has been mostly things that i knew already i mean you okay. know she's been helpful but you know it's been more of a general understanding that i've gotten so do you her. think though that she might work better with you first and work you know when you're discussing the projects with the historical com commission rather than with us, because I want to get that clear. If, if she's going to work with you guys, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. I just want to know if she, if you prefer her to work with you first, and then if we have questions for her, we can always ask her. But if you think that you need her expertise uh, before, well, would she be available f to both commissions? She would, but you know, I don't as questions know. come well, up, well, there's a, a limit, a, a limit to the number of hours she right. can give. But um, I, I mean, I'm fine with her working with you, especially because my um, hours are unfortunately more limited now. So it might be good for you to, you know, connect with her. You know? uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, and would you have a problem with that if she worked with you? Because. Uh, you know. Well, I, I guess one of my uh, questions is, the, you know, the historical commission follows basic guidelines for what properties and uh, are historic within the city um, and um, you know that are already established um, is that what y your starting point is for projects to come through I it would to my mind it's whatever we can set up that is um, sort of automatic I mean already if, if we have uh, made determinations um, by our guidelines for the Historical Commission, and shouldn't that be what the CPA is following? Well, yes? if I may, I think, if I understand correctly, See, I'm sorry. Yeah. you are already familiar with one of the um, sets of issues we have with current applicants, and the Portuguese row house, the mm -hmm. one with the stucco on it, you know, this is kind of a test case for us, I think, because it is a situation where there are two ways you can look at the historic architectural quality of this property. You can look at it as, you know, the stucco is historically significant because of the connection to the Portuguese community. 
You can also look at it persuasively as, no, the stucco should come off because truly, historically, that's one block and we're looking at the architecture and the visual quality and that's what we should be restoring to if we're restoring to anything. And this is something where you know, both arguments, you can see them, but it is beyond, I think, our expertise, which should be the governing um, view of this. And we kind of felt like maybe the historical commission had a better sense mm-hmm. of what the vision is for the city's restoration if you know, we didn't have to worry too much about money, which way we should be going. And you know, one of my questions was certainly whether that kind of advisory opinion was something the historical commission would be willing to give us from time to time. Mm-hmm. And I do think this is why we also need to have a more in-depth discussion. Given that the commission hasn't discussed this as a whole, resources will play a part of this because I know there will be commissioners who feel that they don't have the wherewithal to make some of those determinations. We'd have to talk about that, whether uh, the commission as a whole would feel comfortable giving that opinion. So I... I Yeah, which makes sense, but I think it's a question that I at least would like to see explored if you guys are willing, and I suspect I'm not the only one on this body. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was was just going to say... that type of uh, um, review, I think, would fall in our, uh, that's just my opinion. Like uh, we've been saying, we need to, to have the entire commission agree to that. But um, the, uh, the other things on that list, um, overseeing projects, uh, um, qualifying contractors, things like that, I don't think we have the expertise, the time, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's our, uh, but, but the case you just described, and uh, in my personal opinion, I would say that stucco was put on there a long time ago, and historical preservation would mean preserving that. Uh, but that's another thing we could discuss on the commission and vote. Yeah, that's just a matter of core expertise. It's not so much asking for your opinion on the spot as can we come to you as time goes on, you know, is that something you can do for us? And obviously that is a question for the entire historical commission to discuss. Marco. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, can I? Um, sure, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to mention, so in general, I think that at this early stage, um, you know, when you're looking at those applications, maybe you can mention this in the meeting. What I think the committee needs to know is like, are there more questions that you would have that you would recommend that we ask, you know, about the proposed work, because some of them are not very specific. Um, so it, it would be great to get some guidance in the, that direction. So, so I'm the appointee from the Holyoke mm-hmm. Historical Commission, and I've, <clears throat> and I've tried to, to connect and, and see about coordinating. I think it was a combination of, uh, this is our first session here, and also a combination of not really making, not knowing exactly how it should work. but. To think ahead, uh, if we can salvage what we can in this round, maybe we could get some opinions and maybe, uh, I don't know if there's enough time. If you have one meeting left, I don't know if that's enough time to make some decisions or make some recommendations for us. But in the future, I think we would get you involved much sooner. And if I continue to be your, your appointee, I think I would, as soon as we get the applications, attend your meetings. I think I should probably attend more regularly. I've only been to a handful. And, and then probably I can get that on your radar sooner. Mm-hmm. And then we could you know, begin to separate the ones that have historic implications and the ones that don't. And then I could probably do a better job of communicating the kinds of questions we have and you know, pose those same questions to you and then come back and communicate them here. Or maybe there's some written correspondence. But I think, for me at least, the, the, the biggest danger was pursuing a project that is contrary to what the historical commission would want. And, and again, the, the, the stucco example is a, is a fine example because right. I, I think there are many varied opinions on that. And mm-hmm. I think that uh, if we go one direction, I think we're denying the building a certain interpretation. And if we go the other direction, then we're denying a different interpretation of what that building should be. And I don't know that it's necessarily 
our decision. I think we want to do what's in line with what the Historical Commission wants to do because we feel that that's supporting you and you're supporting us. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it might have been a flawed process this time around. I, I, again, maybe we can discuss schedule and see maybe where the highlights are, where the most critical items are, because aren't, aren't we making recommendations soon? Well, we, we need to start discussing those recommendations, yes. So, yeah. but, we, you know, so I, I would say as the, you know, as the chair of the Historical Commission that I would uh, be interested in, in having the commission be more involved in, in the work of the CPC. Um, and I think the level of awareness of us as a commission of the importance of our role in your process is the light bulbs are coming on a little bit yeah. more. So, so um, you know, I can say that that is uh, more of an awareness on our part that, that it's another role for us to take. Uh, yeah, same here. Pardon. So I think next year will be a much better year, and then maybe we could figure out what we can salvage from this year to make sure that at least in one or two instances we've we've gotten your input. So I, I do have a question. So uh, forgive me, I'm not sure the process of, of what happens from this point. I know I know there's. The different uh, applications that are uh, different uh, with the four different categories, but historic preservation is one. What ha what happens when you make a, re a recommendation on? Would you tell me what happens yeah. from this point? Yeah. On yes, are, are we decide on recommendations and we write those up and we're going to present them to the city council sometime before April 1st, hopefully, and uh, they're the ones that make the final decision. The city council does. Uh huh. But we make the recommendations. Yeah. They they approve or reject the recommendations. Uh -huh. yeah. And it yeah. Uh, you're yeah. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, question. Go ahead, Mike. Um, uh, sir, um, when you guys have um, a, a tough a, a tough project in front of you in determining the historical nature or historical um, path to follow for a building or a project. Um, and it, it's really, it's a tough call. And it, the, one, the, the one that we're talking about now, the Portuguese Club, is, is the case in point for us anyway. Um, do you guys ever, um, does the State Historical <coughs> Commission avail to you historical experts that could advise you, not just on this for us, but for any other projects that you folks are involved in? Do you, can you pick up the phone? as the Hoyoke Historical Commission and call so-and-so in Boston and say, hey, look, this is a problem. These are the two sides of the story. What, what, what would you do? Do you guys ever do that? I would all? assume like, Mass Historic is one. Wait, right? I, typically, just because I'm the staff person, I would start out with Shannon because she is the local representative, I mean, in the I Pioneer Valley. Uh -huh. But we also have um, a municipal contact at Mass Historical Commission that we've worked with, his name is Christopher Scully, Skelly, excuse me. And typically, if you call him, they understand that at the local level, most of us don't have the expertise to um, really dive into some of these. I mean, some of the larger towns, like Cambridge, I think everybody's an expert on their historical commission, it seems like, or whatever. Um, we, we don't necessarily have that kind of expertise. So Chris will usually listen to me, and I'm like, Chris, I've got this, da, 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 da. And if he can't answer it, he points me in the right direction or will give me an example of another community. So some of it, it's not, certainly not science necessarily. There's a lot of opinion in there. Right. But we right. do have those kinds of resources. Yes. But there is a basic guideline in terms of what, what building or structure is historic in the city. So if it's 100 years old is one. Um, if it's, uh, I'm blanking out what the other. Uh, if, if there's a, uh, if we get a, a demolition request uh, that comes before us, uh, the first uh, part of it is we determine whether uh, Historic structure is really significant right. to the So, to so the we have a form that we follow. Um, did, did somebody, histor a historic resident live there? Did an historic event happen there? Is the style of the house unique to that neighborhood? It, was it designed by a famous person? Um, so, so there are a list of categories, and um, uh, and one of them, of course, is if it's if it's uh, if it's on a list anywhere, the national or state or anywhere. Um, uh, so, so that's all part of our evaluation, and we could do the same evaluation uh, if if you know, uh, not everything's going to fit into that sort of uh, determination, but, uh, but we do, we have a set of guidelines we follow 
to determine if a structure is historic um, and, and, and preferably preserved. And if I may, this time around, given how the communication went between me and Amy, um, I provided that initial response to all of you about whether or not it was a historic property. So that came from me as the staff person for the Historical Commission going to all of you. It was relatively, um, I don't want to say easy, but pretty clear cut, clear cut, excuse me, whether or not it was a historically significant property for these cases. And I would imagine that next time around, we'll, we might have a different um, communication style because I wrote those as the staff person. The Historical Commission didn't review each and every project. As this was ongoing, I was waiting to see, and I think Amy was, everybody's waiting to see, it's, it's in flux, how the procedure would go from there. Because determining the historics, that it was historically significant is one, it's, it's a big point, an important point, but it's certainly not getting into the finer points like the stucco issue. That's, that's where there's gonna be other opinion. But I just thought I'd lay that out, that that's how that opinion happened first but it's those finer points that I think are going to be a little trickier. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm just wondering if something, um, if one of our projects is in, or proposals, is in the one of the local historic districts, like the Hadley Falls Company District, um, are they already under some kind of restriction in terms of what they can change about the buildings there? Well, it's interesting, when you're, even if you have a national register, um, designation short of requesting federal funding for some kind of improvement there really isn't any um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry there aren't any guidelines to what you can do there it sounds kind of silly when you say it's got a National Register you know um, designation you'd think that somehow it's protected really the only thing that's truly protected is a local historic district and in city of Holyoke you have one local historic district, and that is the Fairfield Avenue Historic District. So in a local historic district, that's where you look at building materials for porches or um, other types of improvements. National Register is very different. Oh, so is Hadley Falls on the National Register and not yes. the State Register? Oh, OK. Do you, do Actually, you I take it back. I don't know if it's it on was state. On the, I have to remember if it's state or. I thought it was no. the State Register. Or. But, it's, but it's not local. So for me, that's as a staff person, that's the uh -huh. red flag. If it was local, Fairfield Avenue, that's a whole uh -huh. whole other matter. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask a question. Do you, the commissioners, have a copy of our preservation plan that we put out in July last year? The we city a, preserva preservation plan? No, I, our I, preservation. I, our I did si give it out to oh, you all did. the departments. You have a copy, yeah. But okay. if you Probably need do, another copy, I have more copies that's that true. I can give yeah. you. Yeah. We have more copies if you need it. That will be very helpful to you to see, especially the historical part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so I think, yeah, we, you, it'll be something you might be interested in looking at. Mm -hmm. And we will be updating it in July. So if you see anything in there that doesn't quite fit what the way it should be, you could give us some feedback on that and we can yeah. make those improvements in the preservation plan. Uh -huh. So, and there may be other questions that come up. I mean, one issue with the Portuguese club was the question of the use of the, of the future use of it, it, it you know, uh, being similar to what it was, you know, does that f let it fall into a historic category? And, you know, I would say no, I don't think so. Um, and I'm not sure I, I, which direction kind of we've uh, endorsed that project, if that's um, you know, a, a misdirection. Um, so I'm not sure, um, just in review. Sorry, can you explain what you mean about the future use? I didn't really understand. Uh, it had been explained to us, uh, Mike Murray had come to our meeting, that oh. they, his intent is to have it be a, a future club for the neighborhood, and that's what the, was the purpose of the Portuguese club originally as a as a um a neighborhood club yeah um so you know one question is is the historic aspect just the the structure of the building which i, yeah, it's I think not, yes it doesn't involve the use of it yeah and then the other one that has come up in front of the historical commission when we're looking at our the demolition uh issue that we we often face the demolition uh, bylaw that we have um, in trying to get out in front of projects that are uh, not maintained, 
is putting in some type of uh, minimum maintenance bylaw within the city. So some type of project that comes forward to you that's a historic property that perhaps is owned by uh, a person who hasn't taken care of it that is applying for a historic um, CPC grant money, if that would come into question, you know, how they've maintained the property over the years past. Um, it is an issue that we face as a historical commission that, uh, you know, quite often the demolition by neglect is a huge issue for the city, um, and it's something that we're beginning to, uh, to look at. But, um, you know, there may be other questions like that that come up. Madam Chairman, uh, I, I know this is an aside. Is that, you, you raise an interesting point, and I realize it's something that your committee is going to have to talk to amongst themselves. So those, that nature of, of things that you just spoke of, mm -hmm. the function of the building after it's received, historical blessing and money, uh, you're also as part of your considerations as a committee, a historical committee, is what the function of the, of the building is going to be. Is that correct? No, I'm saying that we're, that's not a function of our committee. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Uh, are you? But the, so the, one of the, the projects that's in front of you, I mean, that was one thing that was spoken out loud at a meeting, and I'm not sure if that's, you know, a question like that is, is the use. So it's what we'd be looking at is the structure. Okay, so the function of the building really isn't no. yay or nay? No. Okay. Did you say that the Correct, March right. 11th meeting is the last meeting for a period of time for the Holyoke no, Historic Commission? No, we meet saw, the uh, second Tuesday, or the second Monday of every month. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, Michael. Just one last comment. I, I don't know if we're winding down on this, but I, I don't. I kind of don't want to go away without a plan. So, is there is there a way that that our committee can identify those? five or six projects that we would like to have an opinion and could yeah, that's, we that's bring that true. forth for the their march 11th meeting just to see what happens yeah, i, I was going to ask enough. the same thing if they had a copy of the projects that were mm -hmm. interested they, in having you should it. yeah by, by yeah. email but yep, I, I, if we go away tonight and then you meet on the 11th and you say yeah we should coordinate then then it, we've kind of lost the window i think yeah the window will have closed. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can, um, uh, uh, I don't know if, if we can decide, let's, let's bring forth these projects for them to look at. And it's probably too much to do in, in too little time, but maybe we, we could prioritize them. Maybe they could mm -hmm. look at them in a certain order, or maybe we could you know, try to do the two or three easiest ones. So at least we cover a broader, broader swath of area or, but I, I wouldn't want to go away from this meeting without a plan. If, if at all possible. No, that's, that's a good idea. Well, we've already gotten the letters of determination, right? I mean. Right. I think what I would ask, and this is where it's been a little fuzzy for me as a staff person, is um, other than the letters of determination, now you've got full applications. And I'm, I agree with you, especially given the time constraint, that to move forward or to move on anything right now would be helpful for you. So at the March 11th meeting, though, I would need for you to be clear on what exactly you want from us. It's not just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, and I'm sorry, I, it's not, I'm not making fun. It's just, you have to see humor in some of these things sometimes, and it's not just this committee. Especially the first year that we're doing exactly. this. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But for instance, and I'll use the Portuguese club again, the That's Portugal, good, yeah. but are you asking us to look at the scope of work and um, there's so many variables there. Like, what can they really do with the money they're being asked? Um, does it make sense to give them 40,000 if you think they really need 80 from a historic perspective? I mean, yeah. to do the historical work. We wouldn't be asking you to do that. We would be okay. wanting to know that what they are requesting the funding for, if it complies with what you feel is historical and stays within your, your boundaries of historical that's and, and do your plans did you ask your applicants to provide plans that have that level of specification in them i'm not sure um that's we, we had an application sure that, that had a list of yeah. different things okay. um so, so since this uh, is oh the you same mean as far as the project goes the, of what they want to do oh yes oh yes that's in there okay well yes. it's yes. not very specific well it's specific yeah. enough no, it we we like if somebody, for instance, if somebody is replacing windows, did you ask them what kind of window and profile and all that 
No, because we I don't think we can do windows unless it's their part of the historical, you know, well, unless there's water going in the windows. And well, we can do windows. Precise. That's kind but of the I, case with Maple Street. I, I thought we couldn't do windows unless there was water going in, unless there was some damage. No, you know? it's part of the exterior. It's part of the exterior envelope. I Better thought check. the envelope, was, was yeah. that an issue? I, but the win windows can be a historic rehabilitation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're one of the more costly items, in fact, know, in historic read, preservation. Okay. They are, and that's so what expensive. I discussed with John Tanzi of Maple Street, because he was worried about that particular point. I think we would, and I'm speaking for the commission right now, we want to be helpful in this process. My concern is, if it's not clear what you want from us at that March 11th meeting, I don't want to waste anybody's time either. We'd like to give you an opinion. Well, I need to know what I'm going to we're going to respond to. Maybe Sorry, um, one plan would be, you know, I mean, my hours are limited, but maybe we could work out a meeting where you could come to my office and I could show you the applications. I mean, you've seen some of it, but um, maybe we could think about what are questions that you think well, should be asked of the applicant, you know, to gain more clarity for the commissions. I mean, so that when you meet with them, you have more information than, you know, if you need it. You see what I'm saying? I do. Would that be helpful? From a staff perspective, yes. And, and again, I, I'm looking at my colleagues here. Um, does that sound reasonable, Rich? Do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think so. Um, but if, um, if perhaps, Marco, since you are the go-between, yeah. I think it might be helpful if you yeah. can possibly attend the next meeting. Yeah, I, I would definitely attend, mm -hmm. and, and perhaps I can um, go through the, I, I think we should as a committee perhaps, but again, taking that example that we were talking about, the Portuguese club, many of the items don't really have his, you know impact on the historic significance of the building. The, the, the stucco for me is huge, and I, it's probably the biggest question because well, obviously, you're either going to restore it to be a, represent, a representative of worker housing, you know, turn of the, or what is that, 18th century worker housing, Hadley or, Falls. Yeah. Yeah. Hadley or Falls it's going to be, you know, a representation of, or a, a restoration to the period of time where it was a social club. And each are valid, but, like, I have an opinion. I, 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 I would do one over the other because I think it's more historically significant to the city as one rather than the other, although both, I think, could be argued to be valid. I, I'd like, I think the committee would like to know, or the commission committee would like to know, um, you know, do you have a preference? Because if we do one, it's going to almost irrevocably send that building into a direction. And if you choose the other, I feel like it's going to send that building into something that I think is more in line with the historic significance of the city in general and of that area specifically. So I, I, I feel like for us, it'd be easier to be able to say, based on this letter of recommendation from the Holyoke Historical Commission, you know, they, they have expressed the opinion that it should go in this direction. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe you know the answer, or maybe you, we, we get um, uh, uh, Shannon involved, and, and, and maybe we go to Chris Scully, but I, I feel like there's a, there's a chain of expertise that I think we should try to benefit from. I agree. I just wanted to add a couple of things. Uh, the first of which is we have, I think, two sets of questions here. We have a question about the next year and future cycles where we need to establish a process that will address all of this and will address it in some sensible workflow order where you know, there isn't a time rush and we can ask questions early on like, you know, are there details in this application that should have been addressed that we need to clarify? We may not have time to do that for every project this cycle, but I would think it would be helpful, you know, maybe for both us and you guys, if we could ask you Question. very specific questions on these specific Question. projects. And again, you know, to use our go-to example, because it's the one you guys have been briefed on, you know, the specific question about, well, which direction do you feel best suits the vision for the city overall? I mean, we can narrow it down to that extent. And if there are any other questions like that, I would think it's our job, potentially, to go through as a committee and figure out what those questions are for those projects and try to get them to you, you know, in time for you to address them without asking you to review the details of every historic preservation mm -hmm. application in front of us because we did let it go this long. 
The other thing that I just wanted to note, because I don't think that it's been mentioned yet, is I at least would find it very helpful overall if I could get a sense of the importance and priority of the projects in front of us. You know, obviously we're limited by applications. We review what we get. We don't review what we don't get. But we do have limited funding, and in deciding what to recommend and what not, I would think it would be helpful to know, say, if there's an application for a structure that you all feel is in enormously significant, as opposed to one where, okay, in a perfect world, it would be great if we could do this, but maybe it's not as important. So going forward, if we could get any information about you know, not only how doable this is and whether the vision is right, but what relative importance the Historical Commission would attach to it. I think that would be helpful. Uh, we have 12 projects. How many are historical? Um, I think that I counted about, hold on, let me just count again. I thought it was about seven, but let's see. Um, one, two. Three. How many? Ten. Ten of them are historical out of 12? Uh, I, I don't count know. nine. Um, Okay. I, well, I, ha I didn't look but at But some it, of them yeah. are easy. You know, right. The stained glass windows, we don't right, need to come exactly. to you guys for. But I wanted yeah. to give another, ex what? Um, okay, Maple Street, Flats, Stained Glass, Lanterns. Okay. Victory Theater. Um, They're listed right here. de Esperanza. Oh, okay. Huh. All right. Um. Okay, and I just wanted to give another example because we we're talking so much about the stucco example, but another very simple example that I have on my mind, you know, which is very simple is, um, and I think Mimi makes a great point that maybe we could come up with the questions that are uppermost on our mind, you know, and then get them to you before that next meeting, you know. Um, but the example I had was, for example, uh, one of the, the applications is to, um, fix the lanterns or replicate the lanterns outside the annex and they would have to be replicated because the old ones are you know damaged beyond repair so just to f uh, one question i have is is that in keeping with the sec the u.s secretary of the interior standards for rehabilitation right and i can't quote but i do know it is allowed and they have their own uh, specifications for looking at what is replication so I'd have mm -hmm. to refer back, but yeah. yes. So that's the sort of question that, you know, it would yes. be good to have mm -hmm. another opinion on, yeah. Okay, anybody else? So just for clarity, the, what you're look, we'd be looking for from the Historical Commission are, is a recommendation. So, and then that moves forward to your committee, and <coughs> you, you make a recommendation to, um, or, and, or a determination on these different projects to, to the uh, city council? Is that how it works? Yeah. 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 It's very, it's an interesting mechanism. We make the recommendations and nothing that we don't recommend can be funded, but the city council decides whether to follow our recommendations or not. So it requires basically two yeses. So nothing that you... Nothing that we don't recommend, don't recommend. can move forward. Okay. They can't come, city council can't come up with their own at the right. last minute. So... Our input is important, um, but it's, um, it's, advisory. It's, still a, it's, advisory. it's advisory. It's still a recommendation. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much, okay, good. folks, for thank coming you. in. Thanks. We really appreciate it. And we will be in touch, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Thank you very much. Okay, next item on the agenda is budget budget update. Andrew and Amy. Okay, uh, we passed out a spreadsheet at the beginning of the meeting, and before we go too far, I just Wednesdays I have a something with my son, and I have to get him by eight, so I will have to get out of here at some moment. Um, I didn't get us. Oh, is this? Oh, that's from you? This yes. From Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have Perfect. two columns here. Um, they are redundant except for the first is for the full request over multiple phases, 
and the second side is for just doing phase one. The only difference in that is the Boys and Girls Club and the MIFA request. So you see at the bottom of the three categories of historic open space and housing, there's a grand total for the requests that we've received as a committee for each of those three areas. And then that number, we, there's a total for all three, and then that is carried down. So now I'm on the yellow lines. And the $102,965, that is the amount that is reserved. We cannot move that between accounts. That is two years of the 10% um, in each account. And then we have uh, $735,000, and that is our total uh, budgeted revolving account, which we can move into any of the three accounts as we approve. So that gives us a, a working, so I'm gonna go over here to the first phase and, and I've tried to label them all here in the, in the first side and that carries over to the second column for the phase one as well. Same, same numbers, same uh, projects, sorry. Okay, so you'll see that um, if we were to, beyond the reserves in the account, if we were to fund everything in the historic phase, we'd need another $650,000 of the CPC funds. We have 735, but to um, open space, it, we need another 246,000. And with housing, we only have a $50,000 request, which leaves us of a balance of 52,900 in that account, no matter what. So this is a good tool going forward through the rest of this fiscal year. So we can kind of, as we approve these, we'll know exactly where we stand in each account. These numbers won't change. The only costs that we're incurring at this time are the administrative side, which Amy and I have worked out a tool to track that relatively closely and accurately. And that's not included in these numbers. That's no. not that side. That's we have we have that in a, an Excel sheet as well. We can, yeah. it. but yeah. we're uh, we're watching her hours and we're watching everything else that hits biweekly. She she is now has access to the Muni system and right. we have a good Excel sheet that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a pretty good tool. I've been working with yeah. her on the side a lot. That's worked well. So, okay, any questions? This is, uh, this is our tool. That's great. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Yeah, so anybody have any questions for Andrew? Because uh, this is going to be where, you know, it's going to be one of the tools that we use to make our decisions. It's okay. the tool. Well, <laughs> well, yes and no. Yes and no. So you yeah. made adjustments on just two. Yeah, just two because um, <clears throat> the Boys and Girls Club had three phases, I believe, and two phases. Yes. And MIFA had three. Correct. So uh, we we. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club has two phases. Yeah. Two phases. So we we put that down to just the first phase on that whole right hand three columns, which gets us closer to our actual budget. Right. But still, because of the, we don't have enough money in, in say open space or historic because there and there's housing money that we're not going to be able to use. It's is that 177? Is that their final request there at? Um, for 177 the, is that's, Glowtech. Yeah. Oh, Glowtech. Yeah. That's so that stays the same because that's. Oh, okay. Oh, the that's acquisition. The Glowtech. Oh, okay, I see. I see. All right. There is, I, I do want to mention though that I'm still trying to find out from Stuart Saginor um, if my interpretation of which category these requests should be in is correct because as you know there are some that are sort of, his, they seem to me that these projects are historic but they concern community housing. Um, it, but to me, the, the, uh, from my understanding, only the one that's at 340 Chestnut really is housing. That's the non-historic um, project. The, um, one that is but and I still right, and I'm is. still trying to kind of hear from Stuart Saginor on this. But he was on vacation for a week, so just to confirm that my interpretation is correct because yeah. of the so fact both that of those projects are in in the historic right now because not one of them is not historic. One building's not, so that has to be separated. That one building that's not is the fifty thousand dollars for three forty seven. That one we know is definitely not historic, we but kept that out of there that. are some other ones yeah. like the other fifty thousand for that same um, for Valley um, Valley Opportunity Council is historic, but it also is community housing. But it seems like the project is really about historic rehabilitation, so that's why I've 
put it in that right. column. So yeah, the, the categories that we picked matter. Um, Amy and I were going back and forth on this as well because like 123 Pine Street, I was thinking housing, but there's a chance it's gonna be market rate. <laughs> so that would move it over to historic. But if we were able to move one of these projects like 123 Pine Street or the Armory over to the housing category, we would have more flexibility to fully utilize our funding. And don't forget, those are just uh, developer incentives, and they're not for actual. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we don't even have to fund them but if we decide not to. I mean, so at this point in time, we don't have to. So that, that's one of the ones I have a question on, is the three. I think that, I think that we talked to Marcos about maybe put, putting the three of them as one project and then maybe funding, say, 300000 versus 450000 so that they could use the... 150 for the first project that might come up and well, maybe even a possible I was going to talk about that because um, the thing is they're, they're not all the same though because the armory has an interested developer right so so they would use the first 150 oh okay then if another project came their way mm -hmm. out of the other have, two then they would have you another mean out of the other two the 123 of, pine street or the or train the, station that's what i was going to recommend that you could do it that way that you could consider awarding the 150,000 to the armory that has the developer or that and then the other 150,000 could just go to whichever one gets the best you know proposal instead of awarding both i'm not my, sure my suggestion would be well, just to fund the armory this is my opinion now just to fund the armory this time and if they need money for another one they can come back to us right away and get the money uh, well if i'm not we trying to it, if we have it we don't have to fund one that doesn't have a, a, a developer yet yeah i know I'm, I'm just laying out the cars on the table right. so you exactly. know what the options are i'm not trying to get into a whole right you know, but i'm just discussion. giving you another option yeah okay there's many options yeah. yes okay Yes. Well, all of them do, because I think we should not lose sight of the fact that we are under no obligation to fund anything just because we had an application for it. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. So we yeah. know that. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> okay. Um, is there uh, any other questions at this point in time? How, I'm not sure how you want to proceed. Do you want to pick the easiest one out and start picking it apart and to make a decision tonight on the easiest project? Or do you want to not start doing that what yet? Do you, what do you mean for by, what? By something that uh, we, we feel comfortable in uh, going, moving forward with right now. Yeah. You mean for a vote? Yes. Oh, well, I have a lot of other things that I wanted to update you on in terms okay. of the, then do the projects. Then do um, and I didn't really think that we, we were ready for that, especially since we were going to wait to hear I, from I'm ready Holyoke. for some things. But what about the role of Some with projects me? I'm ready now. Yeah. I would actually like to look at the amounts of money now that we have them in front of us and you know have a week or so to run numbers with different projects rather than picking some out and say, okay, this, 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 now, I mean, what's left over? I and mean, obviously I would defer to the judgment of the committee overall. And I think, you know, there's some that we're obviously going to fund, but. I mean, if we, if we vote on the merits of the project, the money is a secondary consideration. I think if there's some that do not make it through, we're probably in good shape to fund. I also want to mention that I was reading in the um, CPA legislation that you can actually recommend reserving funding that you don't even have for a project that will be funded once you have the funding. We probably don't. Okay. You probably don't yeah, want to get I'll, into that because it's point complex. Point. But I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, yeah we, I know we can do that. We can even bond. We could right. go yeah. out and bond. Yeah. So you know, we, but we don't want to get too complicated yet in our yeah. first year. Here. But do we also want to talk about the budget article before Andrew has to leave us? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. The I, so I, I put together our budget article for the coming fiscal year, and I forwarded this to Alex Morse. Uh -huh. so, for his um, budget, yeah. For his we budget. We have to do that every year. So. so it doesn't have to go directly to the city council, right? It doesn't go to the city okay. council. Okay. Okay. This but it's part of what mayor. he presents to the, the city mayor council. puts the budget together mm -hmm. and presents it to the city council okay. so this will be in the budget when he presents it to the city council okay i see okay. so we don't need to vote on that or anything no okay it's just sounds if good you to me see any discrepancies or anything that you think should be i mean we don't have to uh 
it, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty just straightforward. It's, yeah, everything's in the reserve that can be. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Can we take a minute just to talk about the methodology that we're going to use? That's what I want to know. Yes, from and, you. And I, I'm not Please do. I'm it back up. Please, <laughs> yes. I want to talk about it too. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so are we, well, questions. let's let's finish uh, the the with Andrew's uh, budget and everything. Were everybody all set with everything? Uh, we I think we have to accept the treasurer's report. Uh, make a motion on that. Okay. Any more discussion on it? Did somebody second? You second it, right? Aye. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we ex accepted the secretary's. I mean, this treasurer's report. Okay. So, um, what is what is the next item on the agenda? Um, well, we can under we, it's update on project proposals, which is this the things that you're going to be asking us about, but. Um, no, it's things I'm going to tell you. That you're going to tell us about, but, but we can also discuss before we, uh, as part of that, we can talk about um, how we're going, what the process is going to be here. So go ahead. Who wants to speak first? I don't have any brilliant ideas about <laughs> what I think the methodology should be. Um, I did like your suggestion that we look maybe at some no-brainers. Um, I don't know who determines whether they're no-brainers or not, but maybe have people go through and identify, I don't know if they were the projects that people were responsible for. I, I had two projects. I had the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club, and I had the, uh, the um, Smith Ferry Cemetery project um in in those two i can see one of them being small dollars seems to be big bang for the buck you know and so if i were to make a motion to recommend that project um and then well here's oh, i'm just asking no, no, again i'm talking you, I'm you not can make a motion Someone can second it, but then under discussion, that's yeah. when we can talk about it, all of us talk about it and say whether we think we should move forward or not, because it's not until, and if, when I ask all in favor, if we don't get enough votes, then we can just put and, it aside. And I think when you, when I look at this and, and take my business experience into it and looking at budgeting, when you only have a pie of so big and you're trying to figure out how to allocate the expenses, the end is going to be the hard part, right? I mean, we're going to yes, have exactly. so. Yeah, that's why I'm concerned about going ahead and voting to move anything forward before we've looked at the whole thing globally, because there is that risk that we'll have spent. But, but I, my concern about that is we're going to get hung up. Well, no, we shouldn't, because if people go and say, you know, each of us goes home with this, and we rank the projects one, two, three, four, five, you know, whatever. We'll come back and compare our rankings, you know, and we'll see what do we all agree, you know, without having to argue about it, we should fund. I mean, and aside from rankings, there should be yes or no. Some people yeah, do not some support are, these, yeah. these projects. And, and, and the complicating thing is it's the dollar part of it and that we only have a finite amount of funding. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. as we get down into it, but I, Mike, I don't see any other way How, I'm, other than... Yeah. We, we also met with the finance group here, and Bellamy strongly recommended that we pick a couple of easy ones to get through the system and learn how to do this. He's yeah, and I actually would have thought, you know, this is probably for a later stage of discussion, but since we're, uh, you know, just to float this, I think it might be helpful since this is our first round to really just try to recommend the ones that are not going to be complicated. And we'll be able to do them. We'll get some experience with it. Things that are going to be hard that we aren't sure how to do technically, where we're going to have to figure out, OK, how do we oversee this? Maybe they should wait for the next round. And I think particularly the developer incentives, you know, there is no urgency to those. And if Marcos of identifies a developer who comes back and says, you know, he can say to them, look, there's potential money here, and at that point we'll actually be able to review what they need. 
as opposed to, well, we have to condition everything. And it's a learning process, and if oh, we can and, make this simple now. And that, and that was why I raised a question about methodology. Like maybe, maybe what we're doing is we're taking initially like a preliminary vote, and it's not final vote on what we're gonna do, and then we kind of work our way through, and at the end we say, okay, where everything falls into place except we're off by, um, we're off by $5,000. So if we don't do the cemetery this year, pull that out and then all the other pieces fit together. We have a puzzle to put together. It's gonna be a lot of, a lot of variables. And, and so again, just talking methodology, not proposing that funding of any specific project, but is that the type of, we go through, we do the, okay. It's like budgeting round one. Yeah, this but this yeah. this seems to make sense, but then we get down to the end of it and you go, uh oh, that didn't all fit together. We yeah, need that to totally take a second sense. bite at these, and then I we agree. make a final vote on the whole package. I, oh, and yeah. of course, there's another question that I think we we have to ask ourselves: Are we going to put one vote of recommendation of this committee in front of the city council that says we recommend that you fund these? five, six, seven projects, or are we going to put seven different votes in front of them and say, we propose that you fund this. They vote up or down. We propose you fund this. They vote up or down. I mean, <laughs> it's... Well, you, they'll, they'll, they'll separate them out. Yeah. We, we they can, will? We can just do one vote, and then they will separate them okay, out. As they don't have that to accept, our, the, whole think, accept the whole package, you know. So, so they'll separate them out, but we could go at them at, you know, three, three months later right. with something that we recommend as well. So Exactly, yeah. As long yeah. as we have time. We, we have flexibility. Yeah, we do. As long yeah, as but as no, I completely agree with that. My time. concern was with final votes, not with preliminary. No, we could, instead easy. of doing motions, maybe right away, we could just do, um, like, um, I recommend this project, and this is why, and then get a consensus of everyone. And if we get a consensus, we can say, okay, so it looks like we're prob most likely going to do that one. And but I think we should do e the easy ones first because uh, you know. And the, uh, the, Madam Chairman, uh, do you want to do that this evening? Is that what you're recommending? We do. Well, it it's up to you guys. But the main th the things that I'm concerned about are the projects that need deed restrictions and who's going to make sure that those in the future is going to pay attention. That's, that's my hang up right now. And any project that needs a deed restriction, I, I don't want to do that yet because I don't know how we're going to. And, and I just want to mention that yeah. the historic projects are the most complicated. And unfortunately, that is what right. the bulk of these projects but are. But do they all so, need deed restrictions? Well, you want to protect the public you know the city's investment and but i don't think dollars. they all need deeds restrictions i would say the stained glass windows don't need it um the, yeah well they don't because they are already that the land the whole of city hall is you know the lanterns. i mean there's projects that we could yeah do i mean now. like that's what i said in my email that you could think about um the email i said about restrictions like maybe if it's a hundred thousand or, or over mm -hmm. um that could be one category where you know you have more stringent requirements for a restriction. I don't know if we should do it by money because it could be a project that needs more money, more funding than a hundred thousand, and yet it's pretty straightforward, and we don't feel we need a deed restriction. So I wouldn't want to put a money value on it. That's my own personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, but that's up well, to you guys. I, I know that it's when I spoke guys, with I'm Stuart just, Saginor, I mean, like in yeah. terms of the Maple Street, he said that he really urged the committee to have some sort of restriction because otherwise there's no benefit to the city. Exactly. That We'd have to that's do that. No, I agree on that one too, yeah. And I'm going to play devil's advocate just for the sake of the methodology and say, I don't agree with that. You know, I, I, I might, but I'm just, you know, how are we going to work well, through majority. these issues? Majority. Right, so that's majority. the thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, you may have, I mean... Like, right, we're going to have like various Marco, opinions, right, about yeah. think, talk Marco, about stucco, you know? I mean, I, I get I don't, it. I don't have a problem with the stucco, but Marco has a problem with it, so uh, right. we need to look into it and get... And, and I'm sure he's not the only one. That's just right. my opinion. That's all. Well, that project has issues beyond yeah, the stucco. Yeah, that, that project has other issues, yeah. Well, I'm just talking about the stucco part. <laughs> and, and, I don't and, have we're a, a little problem. too I stuck on the stucco. The stucco. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, let's do the easy ones. Yeah. Right, and I think that... 
there is some advantage to doing that, and it's kind of like, and it, it is like is, a, yeah. it's a preliminary recommend. We vote to preliminary recommend it, and a final vote will be on the whole package, or maybe not. Do we? I don't. Or, or the ones we feel comfortable with. Maybe there. How about we it's figure that out when we get there? We can. Yeah, yeah that's the. Th Can't we pick three? <laughs> I yes. Three. Yes. Three. Yeah, I have. Um, I can, have. Can three. I? All right. So you don't want to go over the updates yes, on, on the projects the updates, before so. you do that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, for Glowtech Woods, um, I just want to mention that we got um, a probate document from Marcia Cassidy's lawyer. She's the um, right from Marcia Cassidy's lawyer. We got the probate document, which says that Marsha Cassidy is the personal representative of the estate. I feel like we're not, I don't have everybody's yeah, attention. Yeah, so, right now. <laughs> yeah, so um, she is But she's the personal it. representative of the estate of Bruce Glotek. So um, yeah. that means that at the time Marsha Cassidy transfers, yes. okay. there will be a deed. Sorry, I don't know if that was that clear, but the, that it seems like she has the power to transfer this yes. for a deed. So for now, according to the city solicitor, we're fine in terms of that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, this is great. Thank you. Um, Elaine, I, I don't know if Sorry. you heard this. So um, I was just saying that we're fine in terms of Glowtech Woods in terms of ownership right now, mm -hmm. according to the city solicitor, because Marsha Cassidy is the personal representative of the estate. I got a document from her lawyer, so she should have the power to transfer the deed okay. to herself. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so Maple Street... Um, just a reminder, the request has been lowered to 17470 just for the 353 to 356 Maple Street, mm -hmm. since the other building application was withdrawn. Um, and we did get a letter from the owner of Unit 354R Maple Street in support of the work. I don't know if you remember, this was a, a, somebody who was a private owner of one of the condos. And she supports the work in the letter, and it was written in English and Spanish, and the term, and even a term restriction of some kind. Mm -hmm. He's he's in Nicaragua now, but he can still communicate through email. He'll be back on April third. Okay, so one Holyoke CDC, the flats for fifty five thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I saw some um, correspondence from you about how he had. I think it was Mike Sullivan asked him to get two other quotes. Oh, yes, a, thank you. He okay. did um, get another quote. I don't know why I didn't have that written yeah. down here. And I did um, send that along to everyone, and it showed that it was almost double the amount of the first quote. Mike Sullivan had asked for that quote. Um, so, yes, thank you. So One Holyoke CDC, the flats, which we've been talking about with the stucco, their, their request is for 55000 um, I had been in communication with Shannon Walsh, and she and I agree that the hiring of an architect, and I've talked to Mimi about this, is vague. She says it's too vague. What would this architect do? Um, and even in their presentation, it seemed kind of unclear whether he understood that the that whatever you know funds he were to get would have to go just towards rehabilitation. Um, and also there was, I don't know if anybody read that article that was passed around about, from Mass Live. There was an article on February 12th about how the Holyoke Historic Commission deemed 43 Canal Street historically significant and that Paulo Ferrario said the stucco affixed to the building was in keeping with the former club's heritage and should not be an impediment to the building gaining historic significance. So I had to read that twice and I realized, okay, that was never the issue. We were never saying that this building is, shouldn't be historically significant because of the stucco. And then I, I, I emailed her and she said that she was misquoted or you know, it was out of context what she was saying. So, um, but they still haven't given us an actual letter confirming, you know, from Debbie Opperman, you know, saying that, yes, this is historically significant. Um, but however, in their application, there is a page that um, seems to be from the Hadley Falls District, but it, it's not really labeled. It has like a little map and it says that it includes 43 um, Canal Street. So I've asked Mike Moriarty to get in touch with um, Debbie Opperman and, you know, 
they'll probably say, yes, it's historically significant, just like the others. Um, oh, and I also sent you something um, that comes from this, that, um, which is the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Historic Rehabilitation. And this, a lot of CPA communities keep it right on the table, which is why I brought it so we can refer to it. And in there it says on page 31 that it's not recommended to apply paint or other coatings such as stucco to masonry that has been historically unpainted or uncoated. uncoated. So I, I, I thought of that in terms of the flats. Of course, it doesn't really go into specifics like, well, what if the, that stucco was also of historic significance? So, But I just wanted to mention you can read that for yourself on page 31. Um, let's see. There's, there's a technical reason for that, and that's a, a lot of paints are not breathable. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that if moisture from the inside tries to migrate out, uh, all masonry is porous, uh -huh. or most masonry. Uh -huh. And so if you put an impermeable barrier on the outside uh -huh. and the inside humidity and moisture can't escape, it, it makes the, the brick, it, it damages the brick. Oh, Okay, I thought I was Stucco interpreting it that um, they're saying that um, if it was historically unpainted or uncoated, it should remain that way. So, so there's a historic reason, but there's also a technical reason. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, let's see. So yeah, and I'm still kind of trying to find out if it is part of that Hadley Falls historic district, which I thought was, yeah. I, I thought it was. I, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I could uh, uh, identify the document right okay. away, but mm -hmm. I, I think it was pretty clearly within that district, mm -hmm. although the building wasn't specifically yeah, listed. Yeah, it is within that district, but the building wasn't specifically listed, but maybe that's enough. Okay. I, I don't know if there's a map or yeah. something that has a line that shows what is and isn't. Yeah. Well, okay. I could Maybe you sh I should show you that page in the application sometime. Okay. Um, okay. Valley Opportunity Council, those two buildings. Oh. I, my building is part of that historic district, oh. um, and the reason why the Portuguese club in that area, it, it's, those are all the row houses, the workers that actually worked in, in the building that I own. Um, there's no, it, as much as it uh, identifies it as a historic district, there's, there's no, it's, it's not a, a registered historical district. So therefore, there's no, you don't have to do anything. Oh. So there's, there's no... Um, it's a historic district, but not a registered historic district? Right. Like Fairfield, Fairfield oh. is a local historic district where you go through all the process uh -huh. to get it there. That area has never been uh, done as a, as a local historic district, so there's not a lot of um, mandatory things that you mm -hmm. have to do there. Okay. Okay. Um, and now, uh, okay, the Val Valley Opportunity Council, 348 and 337 Chestnut Street buildings, they're asking for 50,000 for the one that's historic rehabilitation, remember the older building, uh, with, but they're both community housing, and 50,000 for the newer building um, for preservation. So I um, had some emails with Stuart Saginor, and he did say, you know, remember how in their presentation they... They said that they need this local commitment in order to apply at a later time. He said that that's very typical, and the three-year CPA funding commitment is normal for a housing project seeking to leverage other funding sources, and this is a common CPA practice. So even though you might think, oh, but then we have to hold on to that money for a long time, this is what they're up against, and it's very typical. Um, so it sounds like it might be a worthy project, but um, <clears throat> we just might need more specifics on the exact work to be done. And I'm waiting to hear back from him on whether funding for the historic building would, as I mentioned before, would only be drawn from the historic budget um, reserve category, as I think, um, and also in terms of the developer incentives. Okay, so that's the update on that. And then the Victory Theater, there's a um, $100,000 request, as you know, uh, but over three years, with a total of 300,000. We received a letter from Don Sanders of MIFA stating that um, the year one 100,000K request would go toward restoring 63 light fixtures. I think I might have sent that along to you all. Yeah. yeah. Sconces at, so that comes out, as you pointed out. Yeah, it was like $1,800 a fixture. $1,809 each per fixture, yeah. and. Um, I, I gave you a picture of it and the letter that they sent, so everybody should have that. Yeah. 
So, and there's a picture of the sconce. You can see what it looks like. Um, yeah. They're, yeah. And they also said, and this is something they had said earlier, that year two, well, okay, they said year two funding they would request would be for 40000 for the mural restoration and 60000 for the, the seat, refurb, refurbishing the seats, and then year three would be the marquee blade. Um, and go ahead. I just, you know, this is, strikes me as possibly at odds with what I understood, which was that they were attempting to have the building open in something like a year from the start of construction. Uh, I'll, I'll go back and look at that because. Oh, that's a good uh, point. Maybe I am misremembering no, their proposed I believe, timeline. I, right, Mimi. I think they did say 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we'll. That the whole building would be open and ready at 2020. Yeah, the idea was that they would have to do all of it at once or nothing at all. Oh, that's well, true. They did say there might not everything might not be done, in but they were going to try to open. They were going to try to do the things that they, so they can open it, and then there may still be other work that needs to be done. But I mean, it was it was vague, you know. Yeah. It was not not definitive there. Um, and they, they also shared a, their uh, Massachusetts historic tax credit application with us from uh, January 15th, I guess that was January 15th, 2010. Um, and it showed a plan to take on the mural restoration, uh, or maybe this was the application where they had to, they were told that they couldn't, that they had to do the mural, mural restoration. That's right, because remember they told us that they, yeah. We're trying to restore the boxes rather than the murals, but they were told that they had to restore the murals, so they then submitted... Um, oh, wait a minute, that's an earlier application. Anyway, they shared that application with us, and I wondered where the project financials were, but that was in our original application. And then, Mimi, you had some interesting information. I don't know. Do you want to share? I'm still fighting my way through trying to understand how their financing works. And you know, part of the reason I keep fretting about the timeline is if the historic tax credits are you know, only saleable after the project has been completed and only valid if all of the things that the issuing authorities have demanded are done, you know, can they even sell them until, for instance, the year three things that they're asking for have been finished? And then, you know, I think there's $13 million in their budget of funds to be gotten from bonding done by the state. And I understand via Aaron Vega that that is not money that they actually have. You know, it's true that the legislature appropriated it, and it's true that, you know, it's bonded for. But actually issuing that money depends on, if I've understood this properly, the governor agreeing to release it for the project. And the governor has to be persuaded that this is you know, useful economic development and that all of the funding makes sense, that it's actually a practical project. And he apparently has some discretion on this. And there is some feeling in Boston that Governor Baker's priority is much more like hard infrastructure than cultural um, expenditures. So this funding, you know, again, and this is if I have understood what I've been told, you know, is maybe available, but maybe not available. And to the extent that it's not money in the bank, which clearly it isn't, um, it may, again, impact their ability to raise funds based on what they already have promises for. You know, Don Sanders did say you know, they were going to need to go out and borrow money based on the <coughs> commitments they already had to make up what they need to break ground. So you, know, you can see where this is going. My concern is that we not encumber our funds on something that is speculative, or at least that we... Well, if we do encumber it and they don't go through it, we'll get our money back. That's we will, sure. but we can't spend as it as on they don't project. spend project. You know? And you know, I think we should consider, although I'm not saying we need to decide immediately whether we want to 
you know, make some lower commitment to them so that they can say that they have CPA um, blessing and we support them. But if, for instance, we only committed to do the murals for 40,000, you know, then we would not run the risk of having encumbered 100 to 300 over three years. And we would still be demonstrating support. And given that it's a $45 million project, I don't see that it would be, you know, material hit to their ability to finance it. Actually, um, I, I was thinking that they can ask us for the 100000 and then come back next year and ask us for another 100000 And after that, we don't have to encumber 300000 for them this year. Yeah. Uh, Chairman, I mean, it's a good, uh, maybe when there's a lot of lawyers involved, uh, it, we all, it gets everybody's attention with and, that kind of money. Yeah. And what about the governor? We're, we can't determine well, what the governor is uh, going to do. Our, you know, our story gets worse and more, get, yeah. gets scarier and scarier. Um, so perhaps, as Mamie pointed, it suggested $40,000 for a item and let it go with that, mm -hmm. because I, I'm of the same opinion. I, it's a good idea, and I hope it blossoms forth, but there's too many, um, I, I don't get a good feeling with, 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 I, with what I see in front of me. Mm -hmm. Mamie, the, the points are well taken. Yeah, let's give them 40000 for a item. We know what it is, but that's it. And then we have next year and the year after. That's what we can vote, you know, yeah. those, those, the, yeah. This, but that was just the this, update. And I will also say, I still love this project. I just think we need to take this into account. You sure got a lot of lawyers and accountants involved. And I, when you got a lot of them, <laughs> that's scary. That gets worse and worse. Now you're never going to get your money. They're going to get it. You won't, but they will. Oh, I'm wondering, Go ahead. since the, oh. I was just going to say that, uh, it, this, this illustrates how difficult it is to have conversations about each individual project because I would agree that prioritizing funding to projects that are, gonna, that are guaranteed to be using the money this year and we're going to get it versus encumbering money for future things, all of the things being equal, but all of the things aren't equal. Like we've got a lot of, <laughs> like what, what, how... This is a, a lot of moving parts, and I, mm -hmm. it's going to be really a lot of work to balance all these different factors in trying to determine where to prioritize funding, what to recommend for funding. And mm -hmm. Yes, Michael. I need to leave in about 10 minutes or yeah. so. If yeah. I leave, will we still have quorum? It's five people, is that right? Uh, yes, but are you comfortable with us moving forward on I some am. projects without I, you being here? I am, and I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, looking at the weather, and I, I don't want my inexperienced young driver picking up somebody, that, awesome. so I, I think I need to excuse myself in about 10 minutes or so. Okay, well, we probably all really want to leave in about 10 minutes, to tell you the truth, because we've been, yeah. Do, do yeah. we want... Do we want to do that? Do we want to look at a couple of yes, easy projects yes. just to... Are, are we, are you, Amy, are you finished? Uh, with uh, the... I wasn't quite finished, but um, I'll try to be quick uh, unless you want to move ahead. They... Well, can we, can we talk about projects and then in the discussion, if there's some update in any of the projects that we're looking at, then... And we can... Yeah, those of us who are staying can take items out of water until we run out of a quorum. So, how do you want to proceed? Uh, well, um, let's go on the list, and um, you know, I, I I'm comf very comfortable with the stained glass windows project, and um, I, Andrew said that he's okay with it before he left, uh, and I like to put that forward for a recommendation because I think it's pretty straightforward and been they've already done stained glass window restoration, so it's not something that. It's not, we're not inventing the wheal here, so. Uh, yes, that is make what a recommendation now, Do you want to make a recommendation? I, I, if you guys are so, comfortable. <laughs> Absolutely comfortable. Yeah. I just think what, you know, it. is the motion that we're going to recommend funding of this preliminary recommendation to fund the stained glass windows. Yes. And so it's still and preliminary. With the idea, I'm okay. sorry, just so that it's clear, with the idea that at the end of the day, there will be another vote. Yes. When we final meet. vote. Yes. So we're trying to winnow down and start filling out some boxes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. So. I, I don't know if we should make a motion because that would make it legal Can we at say, this point. Well, that's why. Is there a consensus on the stained glass window? Yeah, for seventy-five thousand. Just to remind you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and they're using it to leverage more funding. Hopefully, that's the plan. Yeah. But they will do one window with that seventy-five thousand. Yes. Three windows. No, just one with the seventy-five thousand. They need more money to do the three. They're oh. leveraging. But they're hoping to leverage. Yeah, they're hoping to get more funding from the mass. No, I, my understanding was it's three. all three, three, nine, eleven, and twelve. No, I've talked to her extensively no, no, about no, no. it. I know how much I was the chair. There are more windows, but it's <laughs> I was the chair of the stained glass committee. I know how much the windows cost. They're going to cost whatever 75. it is. It's we have a consensus. Okay. That we want to fund this. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. So let's There's check that. Going against it, right? right. Okay. Speak right. now or forever hold the peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's uh, so this that's is, one. We all believe that this is a no-brainer. Right. And and uh, I know she um, is that is her name Debbie? I forgot. Debbie. 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 Yes. She mentioned about the lantern something about, but I I, I think that when. Well, I don't know. She said it was a little. I was confused about what she was talking about. But I, I, when they did their presentation, I felt that it was, was one one I was going to bring up, which which pretty, I mentioned before yeah. that question. It's about pretty straightforward. Is whether think, or not that is in keeping. With well, it, it's okay though. <laughs> I don't care. You know, it's they're pre, they're no, gonna, it's not a matter of that. It's a matter of making sure that you know. I, I, yeah. I said it was okay. No, uh, Debbie, Debbie Upperman oh. said it. Today yeah. said that. Okay. Said she that she has told And remember, this is not final vote on right. recommending okay. funding. Okay. And there may be information that comes up on each one of these okay. things that we're building okay. consensus on that we're going to. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that their presentation at what they did at the senior center there was very straightforward. They have everything in place to. No, I agree. Uh, yeah. to, to, uh, and I think they're going to be pretty close to what. Was it, they're doing the best they can to get it as close as they possibly can mm -hmm. to what the original looked like. So mm -hmm. I, I felt comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else has any concerns. So we have a consensus on the funding yeah, of the annex lanterns? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's $500. Okay, we got two down. Okay, and then the next one is the Smith's Ferry Cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, they look like they got pretty much good handle on how they're going to accomplish that process I, I drove by the other day and got out of my parked the car and got out and looked and you can see how nice the ones that they have restored look yeah. compared to the ones that aren't restored so I, I that that certainly seems like a, a well-deserved um, project okay so we have consensus on and Smith's Ferry Smith's Ferry <laughs> Okay. okay. The rest stop. of them are pretty, pretty uh, well, a little bit I more complicated. Although I feel would... like I should put in a word for the Kestrel Trust because that is key ready. They are doing everything. Yes. Um, they're going to, you know, we basically can recommend that and all of the work will be done for us. What, what I we like don't... about that one is they have somebody who's going to stay on top of it that we don't have to exactly. watch it. Exactly. Uh, I like that That's a, a lot. It's going to be <laughs> really easy. I like the easy. fact that yeah. we will immediately mm -hmm. get the back taxes on it because, mm -hmm. you know, right. well, Okay, the only um, concern about that is in the future, we won't be able to get any more, we're not going to get any more taxes on it. Well, well that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, just, we're just preserving saying, it. But, but there is but, yeah, a possibility for revenue for the city from logging, right. because yeah. that hasn't been taken off the block, so. Right. And there so are no the expenses future. for building out. Right. And, you know, obviously there's some revenue that we might miss if we wait for a developer to come in but it's three houses and time is money right the so, other thing is this is a do or die project yeah if it's not done by the end of april it goes away yeah because she can't wait any longer okay. she's already so here's so here's my question right. I and mean, i asked it when they were here and you right. know it, it is like is it really developable now, uh, no. they answered that though. They did. They did come back the next week and answer it. I'm so, okay. So, so one one piece of that is that it's only 150 foot of frontage. So when uh, Bruce Glotek did the whole last development of of that um, Rock Valley Road, he made sure that he didn't have the 200 foot frontage because he never wanted to see it developed. So if somebody went in 
and wanted to develop it and put a, and had would have to put a road in which is very costly right and could yeah. only and it, it's only approved for maybe two houses if that so there's really no it's not really it's cost. really not so this is so th so that's a double edged sword right i mean part of it is help me understand where there isn't like there's a developer that's ready to jump on this property and develop it, which, which then you'd be having the argument, oh, the tax revenues versus open space. I, I would personally fall on the open space. I don't think tax revenues from residential development cover the expenses of that development. Well, this is it. Yeah. I don't if think the if so, there is a developer, he would have to pay the eighty-six thousand well, dollars back well, taxes. That also. That yeah. too, right? So, so are we? Yeah. Are, are, but help me, and you know. So but they, this is where, and this is an abstruse economic point, but it's nevertheless real. Time value of money. $86,000 this year 87, is, or 87000 is worth materially more than $87,000 two years from now, five years from now. The amount of money it's actually worth, you know, plummets as time goes forward. And by that time, if, it would be more than 87. It would be two well, more years of taxes that they'd be back. That yeah. Know, well, you know. so for her, for um, Marsha Cassidy, who's, who's the present owner, her thing is, right now, because she's in back taxes, she can't get her license to run her little farm stand because she's in back taxes. And she said, if I could just sell this, I can." she still has a little bit of property left. She would like to set up her farm stand. She does cut but, flowers. Well, who's going to buy it? I mean, what's the competition for the CPA funds? Like, who, who, who would... Who's going to buy a piece of property that has eighty-six thousand dollars worth of back taxes and isn't developable? You, I'm not, so I'm asking. I'm okay, not. so on Mountain Road, yeah, we do have a developer, and there is a it, there is a parcel that could come up in the near future where he would have access to okay. Mountain Road. Thank you. Yeah, that's the answer. That's what I was we're looking trying to for. prevent. Okay, uh, now okay. I get it. Yeah. Now and he lives right next door. Uh, now I now <laughs> you have consensus of but is he willing to pay the back taxes so that he can do that I he mean, would be because he could access it from mountain road and develop from that end versus having to go up a cliff through I, major water he probably owns a budding property that this would become a bigger yes. part of a now so it's okay it's, it's really a win-win for this community and you know the other thing uh, i want to say is that when I was a chair of the CPA, it was very difficult to get that end of Mountain Road to support CPA because they said, we'll get funding in t or we're going to pay taxes and all the money is going to go to the urban areas and nothing's going to come to rural oh, Rock they Valley. They lose this argument that's over a lot of things yeah. with right. this They fund. do. Yeah. That's, that's so I, I don't want to hear that from them anymore. That's right. Because <laughs> about they're, they're behind this and... And for them, it's their backyard. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Let's, 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 I, I say we go for it. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. You have my support on. Okay. We have okay. preliminary. We have a preliminary. preliminary okay. 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 All right. So that's four. Madam Chairman, if there's one more. I, I, again, I'm going out on the limb, but I think the Poya Boys Club, because of its timetable and its money, and okay. because of the, the common good that it goes to, right. there are issues involved, but they're not insurmountable. Nothing okay. that can be done. But here's the problem with that. If we do the blue tech woods, we don't have enough money to do both phases of the no. Boys and Girls Club. We could right. do phase one. Yes. Right. That's oh. where yes. I... That, we could do, if definitely we do, do the blue tech, I mean, this is, yes. this well, is where we're going to come into okay, a... Okay, no, that's okay. So, okay. That's okay. Yes. so let me just make this point. I've gotten a lot of feedback from the mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club from people, and everybody loves what they're trying to do. The one thing about them is that they could have gone after funding, other grant money, if they got the CPA funding. So was that any question that came up when you talked oh, to them? I mean, I, I, yes. I, I had this conversation okay. with them. You know, I, I said, you know, I've heard the criticism that, you know, you guys have access to all, you know, okay. to applying for funding and all these different, they, they laughed at me. Okay. They, they said, you know, we we are on such a tight budget. We work so hard to raise every nickel we can. Okay. So... So, I so mean, in other words, if they do get some CPA money, maybe in the future they could start to get some leverage. That's exactly why yeah. they're applying right. for well, it. I mean, I think 
my opinion, we should look at funding phase one. Right. Phase two, they can come to us in the future. In they can look for year? other yeah. funding. They can do or what they want. Might, Be, might because, funding. frankly, this is where we're balancing our priorities, right? Now, you can't do their whole thing and do glutamine. No, right. Well, yeah. the other possibility is remember that it is only 10% that we can't shift between accounts. Right. If we find at the end of the day that we are not doing developer incentives, that we are not doing right. all of the victory theater, right. we may be able to shift all that money in and do all of the Boys and Girls right. Club. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. well yeah. put. That's a good idea. That's right. So the other piece the revolving to the boys part. and girls. Oh, from the general, you know, from right. the 70% yeah. that we can. We can revisit phase two is what you're saying. Exactly. We what can. Other things we decide we want to fund or how much right. we want to hold yeah. in reserve for next yeah. year. But I think we can say right now, absolutely on phase one and probably on phase two, depending on how the money comes out. I, I agree. Yeah. So. Madam Chairman, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I would like to have a preliminary approval and consensus, consensus yeah the okay. board yeah. that we do the first year of Hoya boys club phase uh, one phase, phase one. one yeah and uh, uh, under the hope that we can and or try to make it as certain as certain can be that we do phase two mm -hmm. uh, because of the uh, it, it's clearly of all these things it strikes me as that one that applies the common good of all the citizens more than any other project we have here more citizens and their children more, and grandchildren will be involved. More bang for the buck on that project. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It, it, exactly. Really. It affects the, it's citywide in its right. effect. Um, so if there's any one, uh, that would be it. Yeah. No, and, I, and I will say that I did talk to them after their presentation, and Kestrel Land Trust had contacted them that day, and they're willing to work with their kids to do um, like a tree program to show the kids, because the, they have gotten idea. trees from the Conservation Commission, and they died. So one of the things I said to her was, you know, if we have trees from the Conservation Commission. We don't have to go out and buy them. We can donate those. They're part of the tree program. Right. And, and then let's set up a nice little programming with the Kestrel Land Trust and, and the Boys and Girls Club yeah. to get kids to care for trees and, yeah. and start to see, Good you know, idea. it happen. That would be less, so that would be less, less money, money there. Less money they would ask, yes. yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, it's only money. <laughs> so are we going to stop there? Yeah. Oh, you mean the total. <laughs> How much you got Unless money? someone else has another one. I mean, I already expressed my opinion about the developer incentives. I'm willing to go one, you know, the one they have, the, uh, the armory. And then if they get another developer for the other two projects, they can come back to us. I don't think they're going to try to get a developer, though, because they've tried in the past without success for the others. That's why they're asking for the incentive. Well, we're not, we're not, I'm not saying that they're that we're not going to give it to them. I'm saying that when it's time, that when they get a developer, let them come to us for, I, I'm willing to give them this money, but not now in this round of funding because they don't have a developer yet. That's my yeah, opinion. I'm just saying, I think they've tried to get developers the regular way, like you're saying, and they haven't succeeded, oh. which is why but they're they asking. They say we have possible 150,000. I think and, that and there's no have. guarantee this gets them that either. You know, that's right. part of, I think this is no longer a no-brainer. We were yes, going I'm and doing the no-brainers. And I, and, and I think because there's only five of us here now, and I know everybody yeah, is invited to come, I, I, I think we should stop as we start yeah. to get into the more, I don't want to use the word controversial, but more, more complicated, complicated projects and yeah. give everybody, because this is really, what we're doing right now is the meat of this committee. And there's people here who have been to dozens of meetings, and I don't think it would be fair to them to not, to not include. And again, we're not taking final votes, right? right. And so I, I qualify that, but. Megan, you had something. So in our preliminary conversation, so City Hall stained glass is 75,000. The Annex Lantern Project is 500. Smith's Ferry Cemetery is 5,300. Kestrel Trust is 177,900. The Boys and Girls oh. Club. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it is? Okay, sorry. First phase is 171,089, with phase two being 188,600. So if we're saying the no brainer category for preliminary recommendations for funding, the total, if you just include the first phase of the Boys and Girls Club, would be $429,789. Seven hundred, seven hundred 
if you include both phase one and phase two of the Boys and Girls Club, that would mean the total would be 618389 Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. So, what's the problem? No problems. I think now the hard work's going to start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so should should we can we or should we move the projects forward in two phases? Instead, in, when we know we've got this group that's no questions asked, um, and we all feel comfortable. I mean, after a second vote. Should we, or should we wait and do just one? You mean move it? One to, recommendation to the to, city. Like, could we, yeah. could we recommend in two phases? Oh, that's a very um, good idea. We we mm -hmm. could we could do. You that, mean to but, the city council? I right. I think it's um, too soon. I think it should all be no, in one. No, it's too soon yeah. until we get. But but if in the next few weeks we get yeah to we get everyone here and we're <laughs> and we're feeling comfortable with this <laughs> first group, yeah, why not could. send it forward and let them get started? Right. And, and because otherwise they're going to get well, they're going to get I a agree. lot of projects in front of them. Well, and, I agree. The, yeah, that's a good idea. And are they going to go project by project, or are they going to take one agenda item? Know. If we had four projects like this, if are they going to go have, up and down on all four, or are they going to want to go through each no, one? No, they're going to want to go. I through bet each they go through each one. one. Sure, they will. And, and I'm sure. One. So it doesn't really matter whether we. I was just thinking if we've got the simple ones that we think are going to get support of city council. Put them in a package and go, but there's no I benefit. I think we do. That. I mean, I, I well, that no, I think there is a benefit, like uh, I think Mary oh, said, just go because it'll, we aren't giving them the whole package right. at once, so that it's like you know, if we can, but if give them a few here's to the look hard at. part, right? Yeah. Of that, of that, maybe the downside of that strategy is that if I'm making that vote, I don't know what you're coming with next, and I don't know whether yeah. To, Go up or down on yeah. the ones I have because I don't know what I I'm think that um, like something else yeah. in the second package it's, better. It's it's, too. it's the process is supposed to be that you yeah. know you make you send the orders to city yeah. council so yeah, they right. see the whole package at once. And I yeah. think your point is correct that yeah. you know that could change their view of if they get recommendations that come later. That's true too. That's true too. Uh, yeah. And then they might be more likely to approve the first ones, but not the second ones. Right. You know. Right. So. They, they do go one by oh, one, but in, in most of the other communities, a lot of them have rolling votes, so they do present at different times. Uh -huh. I mean, I've gone through where I'm the only one going in front of But the, of the orders council. are still sent at okay, one so, time, so, so they can see the whole no, lay, yeah. layout of no, what's... No, they send them rolling, a lot of them. The, the CPA we can, we can community, yeah, sen it's, committee sends them? There's nothing written and okay. installed yeah. that we can't send two rec different recommendations. But the thing is but that... But it's something to think about. But it, it, right. even if we did send the prelim the ones that we are comfortable with in, ahead of time, uh, if, as long as they know that we're, whatever we send them, our recommendations are not going to go over what we have for funding, it, right. they, they, then that shouldn't affect them, even if we do it in two. You know what I mean? They, yeah, they yeah, could yeah, still. Yeah, I mean, but there so might can, be something. Because they still would, have to be yeah. able to, to oh, be able to saying. fund right. everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, the funding will be there. So right. As long as they because don't be we're there. not going to send them anything competing that, proposals right. for things mm -hmm. that they. That's oh, a good we point. can't. We. Yeah. Well, Andrew even yeah. said that we we actually if if we reduce some a couple of these, then we can fund everything. So, yeah. but, but do yeah. we want to? Yeah, no, just because and we, we may can. not want to. No, that's yeah. a, I mean, we don't have to. There's <laughs> no, we have questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But the ones we selected tonight are yeah. clearly. We feel good about. The yeah. five of us. <laughs> well, I mean, that's democracy. Do, do, Sometimes Amy, votes, well, votes. Right. And again, we're just. That's democracy. Right. I mean, do any of those need a deed restriction? But, I think the but, Boys and Girls Club need something. Yeah, it's yeah, not. They do. Okay. It's not really on the agenda that we we're and, going to be doing the, this tonight. The, so you know, if I had had, low -tech doesn't need you know, a, a no, meeting, I might have said, I'm not going yeah. to my meeting. I'm going to go vote on the. But they're going to take yeah. care of it. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah, like about that. Yeah. I just I think I would. Yeah. Well, I would be really disappointed if I didn't come to a meeting. All in place. For and this wasn't on the agenda, and then. Final votes were taken, and I had been to no, I 40 think. CPA meetings, and the <laughs> one that I didn't come to votes. Yeah. When they what, yeah, the whole reason I, you know, you lose, you lose. What can I, tell you? I know well, I it's the story of my oh, life. But. It's true. It's also true, however, that we have a. I mean, if we have consensus on what we voted on, and the consensus doesn't budge, we're a majority of the committee. Right. Right. 
I mean, it would be right. different if we were like taking right. three, two votes on. Right. But no, I agree. We can't be doing fi final votes tonight when it wasn't on the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I think yeah. it gets us in a much better place. Anyways. Well, I think it's a lot easier to do the rest of the work. I yes. Guess. You come in and you say, we've, we've taken $450,000 off the table, and these things now there's 600000 worth of projects and yes. yeah. 400000 left to fight over. Yeah. Makes, I think it makes it's it a, easier. I, I think it's the right method. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good for okay. us. So we have to Onward. For Anything us. else that we want to talk yeah. about tonight? Yeah. There are more things. Um, not we're, too much, huh? we're running lo very low on the admin budget. Um, so, you know, when I last checked, there's only 189 hours. And then after this evening with Ryan and I working, you know, there's going to be even fewer. So um, I I'm just want to mention that because it seems like it's a good time for the committee to step in even more closely with, you know, and you are tonight, which is really great, but um, just to you know, read over the applications carefully because I'm gonna be more limited and I'm having to be careful not to do too many hours. And it's a little tricky knowing, you know, I, I have to make sure I don't go over and, um, and yet I'm not in complete control over that since Ryan is also submitting hours each week. But I look, you know, I, I see what they are. And the other thing, to... Amy, I think that um, Marcos was uh, really adamant about that he would be the liaison between yeah. and mm -hmm. I think let him do that yeah rather than you getting involved in using more admin hours mm -hmm. I think that yeah. let him because he's willing and, and he sure. definitely has the knowledge so I mean I think it would also be great to have people reading over the financial details of the applications you know since I'm and it, to, it's a little hard you know now that I'm working fewer hours also to keep it all in my you know as vivid in my head, you know, as opposed to when I was working 25, 30 hours a week. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, also, I really think we should schedule the, a bunch of meetings right now so we have that in place. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and also, um, I wanted to, you know, kind of bring up, and because we need to be transparent, but, you know, maybe we should look for someone um, to... Um, uh, you know, a volunteer to do the minutes rather than, you know, that would cut back a little bit on your hours. But, you know, if we will, we'll, you know, I just want to bring this up for discussion. Uh, I don't know if Ryan's agreeable or not. And to let someone else, you know, be uh, to volunteer to do the minutes. And that would be a couple hours less uh, um, a week. Not a week. I would say every time we have a meeting, that's a couple hours that we wouldn't have well, to pay someone. Well, the last two weeks, I think Ryan worked about 12 and a half hours, so over two weeks. So it's about three to four hours, I think, for Ryan. It was, it was when we had two, two meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, yeah. When and we, we have are two meetings a week. Mm -hmm. We don't, yeah. Hopefully we're not going to do that okay. again. So. Well, what did we have for uh, But did you want to talk more about the minutes situation? Because I well, know that Well, I'm throwing it out there for people to think Making about. Would you like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want, I want to, I don't want to take hours away from Ryan, um, you know, unless that's the committee's um, decision, you know, so I want to, I want to throw it out there. We need to think about it. It's, it may, may be a concern down the road. I don't know. <laughs> so, How, so how many hours to do for your, so if we have a meeting a week, and just mm -hmm. make this too, off, too often well, at this point. Let's see. So, you're, so you're here for three hours. Three it's hours, gonna be, and then it's gonna be you're doing hours, an hour so. worth of Usually, put yeah. the minutes together? Well, sometimes a little more. Depending yeah, on it's, it takes. Okay, so it could be a couple hours. Yeah. The only thing is if you have a volunteer doing the minutes, my volunteer decides not to do the minutes. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. that would be the case. Mm. Then you could have a you could have a problem. You could have what? You could have a problem if you did, if you had a volunteer doing the minutes. And I'm not saying that any person mm -hmm. might volunteer or step in, but all of a sudden, we, if they, whatever, I don't know, if they get sick because they don't, we don't right, right, right. They stop showing up. I mean, many right, right, right. be doing these minutes. Oh, that's true. So part, so, so one, one way to save some money is to meet less frequently. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, if we're here every week. 60 minutes, Well, if we're here every week. I wish, yeah. And then there, every meeting has an hour worth of minutes. I mean, why, why are we meeting every week? 
Well, well the, only recently we have. We've had Before to that, it was once a month. It was well, great. Well, <laughs> there's been a lot. But now discuss. we're in the. So this is not, crunch time. This is crunch time. It's the only way to reduce the admin budget is to reduce how many meetings we have. Right? Well, no. I mean, no, I mean I do other work too, but yeah. um yeah, it is definitely more hours when the there are meetings. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, so nothing and that can right. be reduced. Nothing else that you can reduced. Mm -hmm. Right. What did she say? I didn't hear what she said. What did you say? Nothing. It's the only thing that can be reduced out of what Amy Landau does as a staffer. I still didn't hear what she said. I think she's saying that the the meetings is something that can be reduced. No, the minutes. I the mean, minutes oh. are the only duty oh, the that Amy has that we can reasonably reduce. Well, I'm not doing the minutes. It's Ryan. Well, so Ryan. Still the yeah. admin okay. budget. The right. admin budget. Right. It's still that's the why, that's still what the I was admin thinking budget, if yeah. a volunteer could do it, but then I don't know how you want to handle that. So. And when we do have a meeting with me and Amy both being here, it's all double. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I were to do, I could, I could go through a video. You can get the video set up and maybe. And then you yeah, got to listen. It's going to take you just as long to listen to the video it, as it, it is for you to sit here. Bit. I mean, obviously, I have a good amount of notes before I go and do it. Right. But yeah. It would, I mean, it might take a little longer, but, you know, we could try it out. I don't think that's... But you also have to be here to make sure the mics are set up right and to monitor the camera? Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, I could do that a little bit off. I mean, because if, if there was something that went wrong, I would talk to Scott, who does our audio-visual, and I think he could come and fix it, just like I would here now, so, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I I don't think we should reduce your time as far as the recording. We need that's important. The recording that's key, recording and and getting the agenda you know out and uh, noticing our meetings. And that's that's important. We don't want to lose that. But the minutes. Of course, I could get out the agenda. I mean, I'm just. Okay. Is this that's something a I discussion do. that we need the full committee for? Sorry. Is. <laughs> Now, these are all administrative details, and I understand that they are important to get right. But is this something, since we're talking about the amount of time we're spending in meetings, that we actually need to have the meeting, you know, all of us here in a meeting dealing with? Or is it something that can be arranged by email with the staff and the chair, say? Um, I No, I, I think... We'll be here all night. No, I, I think this is something that the committee needs to decide. I mean, it's... it's or you could recommend. Yeah, so, yeah. So I can make a recommendation. Need, so, so, so we need a we need an admin budget for the rest of... Well, we know what it is. Do you have how many hours? Amy, well, and what is the last time I checked, through. Okay. it was 189, but that's before okay. today. Right, but week, what... It, okay, so say there's 180 left, but how many... How many hours a week do you do? You told me what it was. How well, many you figured it well, out? Well, like, okay, uh, it changes each week. But like but last no, I checked, average, it was about nine. But that includes both of us. So I've realized that I should probably not work more than six hours a week if Ryan is also, you know, working to just to be on the safe side. You know, because if I work more than that. I was work, trying to work more like eight or nine, but now I'm thinking maybe I should only work like five or six because well, of Ryan's hours. He doesn't work three hours every week. It's only every other week or when we have a meeting. You but know, right that, now. Yeah, yeah that, that's what hurt the, the public hearings and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had about three it's just, weeks. It makes me a little nervous because I don't know how many hours exactly it's, you know, I can take because I'm not in control over them since I'm not the only one working, you know what I mean? And yet I'm the one who has to oversee this, right. and I don't want to make sure that we, you know, we don't go over 5%. So we have 17 weeks left until in this fiscal year mm -hmm. with 180 hours. That's about 10 hours a week. 10 yeah. hours a week. So, I mean, if it helps, I mean, if it starts to become a real or something, you know what I mean? I don't mind yielding hours of like a volunteer, you know what I mean? Or, you know, being yeah. creative, you know, I don't mind. You know what I mean? That's okay. We might so have to be, there is, we yeah, might have to be creative. It's a lot. Well, 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 but I'm open to do that. You know, it, it probably is, it probably more like 20 hours for half the number of weeks because it's going to be a whole period of time where we're, we're kind of. We're wound we're down, right? We've yeah. made our recommendations. Then we're just sitting back until 
we have our Everyone's annual review of well, things. Well, I think that there's a lot of. Cycle. But what about um, negotiating with the applicant? You know, to draw up the contract. That's a very interesting. That's going process. to have to be the legal department. We can't do that. But somebody at, on the committee then will have to step up and work with Crystal. Sure. If I'm not able well, to do well, that, well, you know, we all. will. This, so, this is maybe. Maybe this is the the to do is to try to put together a budget. And with, with how many hours of meetings we can have, how many hours of your time to meet with the law department and to facilitate any, any what other, other tasks that there are and try to say we're not gonna, we can't exceed those that budgeted hours. And you know, like you, you think can't that, spend 10, you can't yeah. spend 20 hours meeting with the law department Per the budget, not me telling you mm -hmm. or anybody telling you. But well, I was just budget. answering your po point about it. You're saying it'll just be really easy once you know the recommendations are made. And I was just trying to bring to your attention that there's going to be a lot Great more work point. that has to be done. Great point. So yeah. that's what makes me think, well, you probably have the ability to propose a budget to say, like, okay, we know. Although, because what we don't want is we don't want to get... A you month from yeah. now, and we have 10 hours left because we have no. a meeting a week, and there was all these other, and now we're out, and, we have, and we're getting to the crunch time where we're making recommendations to the city council and doing other things, and we have no admin budget left. Yeah. So now, do you think you could estimate a little bit of how you would spend that next 17 weeks? Just give us an estimate, maybe. No, because I think it's going to be, I don't, we've never done this before, right? This is a learning curve for all of us. It it's a learning to, curve for the committee. Have to be exact. For right. me, for the city solicitor who's never done this before, for the applicant. So there's, uh, there's so much that's, and I, I think, I guess in answer to your question, I might be able to do that better the more the committee is clear about what they want to do. So for example, I brought up the question of restrictions for a long time and mm -hmm. asked you to think about it and I haven't gotten really a clear answer. Because we don't got, get it. We don't know, understand all that stuff and we don't we wouldn't know how to I don't know how to do those. I, I that's why I'm avoiding Well then what calls. my suggestion is could each and that may be a factor could, in yeah. some of what our yeah. votes are well, my, is like how complicated is this yeah. project and how much admin budget goes is associated with that. You okay. don't have the budget. Well, and, one and we idea I had is that if each committee member could take on an aspect of something that we're unsure of and really step up and like somebody really research and I, I can tell them what I have, you know, and they could contact Shannon Walsh, they could whatever, contact different people to learn about restrictions or whatever it is. I could sort of break it down. You don't know which projects need restrictions. Which well, I know do. which projects need. Okay, good. I mean, That's a start. That's good. I've been telling you which projects need restrictions. So, okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm still not sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it's hard. There's a lot of moving pieces, right? I hear what you're saying. And my first response was, well, let's just figure out, you know, how many hours of your time to help develop a restriction on a project but we don't know whether we're funding the project or not <laughs> so how do you put right that that's together? right that's yeah, another that, unknown but, but yeah what, but that's why I think to start to just say no matter how you're spending your time you know there's certain okay look a block of time we know we're going to have x number of meetings between now and June 30th. Well, we could estimate how and, many and but we don't know for right, sure we, and yeah. we'll be in, but that's budgeting right yeah, so we yeah, say yeah. Okay, we're gonna have eight meetings, and that's and we, five and, hours per and, meeting. Right, and that's and, forty hours. Now we're down to one hundred and thirty hours. How are we gonna divide up that other right. one hundred and thirty hours? It's really hard. Mm -hmm. When when the city hard council, for me. I'm, I'm I'm not managing this. You know, that's not. Yeah. When the city was, it's a different yeah. story. When the city council gets the recommendations, they're gonna send it to subcommittee. Then the subcommittee is going to discuss all the projects and they're going to have us come in probably and you and maybe some of the Ours. project people to ask them oh, questions I'll need to come in. Uh -huh. you might have to how are we going we'll to be presenting to the city council is it, it, how does that process work we don't present okay it's a written They'll document questions if they have questions they will ask so it, it the recommendations come to them in a written right. form okay and they're going to send it to a subcommittee Ah, oh, okay. You know, I don't know which one, probably ordinance, I wouldn't think. And then we would have to come and answer questions. And then if they have questions about mm -hmm. things, they'll call us in. Uh -huh. and, yeah, and, and including would... you or us or, I... or the project 
people proponents the, the too, proponents, right? They'll, they might have to come in and answer questions. So maybe if, I mean, you could tell me how much time that generally takes. I mean, I don't it know. Depends I just on, think it's really hard to predict that all this. It is. Because yeah. But otherwise, we're just flying blind. Yeah. Well, right? we're not and totally we're blind up, because we at least know how many hours are left for yeah. admin. Yeah, we do right now. But just a big, big per week, pop, she knows step. average per week how much she can. Yeah. And, and, you know. What do you mean, over time? Oh, I thought you meant we're over time. Yeah, we no, don't want to go more than three hours tonight, but we did already. Longer than we really can give it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. So I agree. But right. one thing that I might suggest we think about is, as Amy suggests, what we can reasonably take off her hands so we don't even have to consider it. You know, for instance, one obvious point is I don't think that Amy necessarily has to think about being available for city council subcommittee meetings. Right. You know, any of us can go there. And we can say, you know, you've got the three of us here who reviewed this particular right. project. Or the proponent. Or the, bring the proponent Or bring the proponent in, in and, you know, a few representatives of the... I mean, just... I mean, they don't need nine of us for every meeting. No, and no, just... The no, fact no, exactly. that, um, exactly. Elaine, just, that you assigned people different projects, That's you know, right. maybe each person could really, you and, know, and jump here, in And here's the other piece here. The, the city council has to realize that we have done the due diligence here. It doesn't have to get redone. Well, mm -hmm. but, you and know, if, yeah, but if they choose to, that. ask a few questions. <laughs> you can, you can Yeah, but they still You can might, be you the know. one that attends the meeting. You can tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the thing. I'll and try. I'm not saying well, that Amy has to go to those meetings only if they ask for her. Yeah, but yeah. if there's no budget, what are we going to do? Right. Well, this is, I think your point of one of us or somebody yeah. from the committee can go. Yeah, no, at this I mean, point, this we have a member of the committee, Councillor Sullivan, who could explain to them that, no, this is not practical or reasonable. Yeah. It would cost money we don't have. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Um, can we set up future meetings? Yes, yes. Um, let's okay. do that. Just That's so you guys know, next week, council's meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Wednesday, I can't Here. do anything. Oh. I don't want to do next weekend. Next I'm Wednesday. traveling to... Oh. I'm going to pop to this a week from, yeah. two weeks from whatever day. I can do any day of the week except Friday. Yeah. Well, no more Fridays. No more Fridays. So that, should we just I'm not meet next the, week? Then? I'm here till the 12th, and I'm gone for a week. Oh. So that leaves out the 13th. Then. So that's next. That's the week after next. So we'll yeah, so I can do. 12th is what day? The, so we can't meet on 313 either? Well, we could. I we I'll just won't have um, Rosemary here. Though. Okay, but we're not meeting three six. Is that what you're saying? I can't meet three six. But if Mike wants to take the meeting, you can meet uh, three six sure. if you want. If that's workable, if that's what day? I won't be here at all. What day? That night. Three six. Yes. That's a week from tonight. Mark, I'm, I'm not going to be here. Right. Not here, here. So that's two. What's the harm of skipping a week? I don't know. I don't know. We were just talking about. I think we'll no just harm. keep in mind that you know we have to. You have to start drafting the recommendations, or we have to work on that by the. You know, it has to be yeah. submitted in April. So that's the. I'm I actually to. have the thirteenth on my calendar for the CPC already. We must have discussed it at some point. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. We already had three thirteen. So, the, so, so it would only be without me. I mean, there'll be other people. Yeah, but you're yeah. important. Oh, you are important. So oh. the, the, the I'll be here when it's time to vote. Thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> The projects that need a restriction, um, whoever has. Well, all right. When you say need restriction, it's it's not that it's CPA. The only acquisition project we have is the open space one for Glowtech, so that one absolutely has to have the perpetual restriction. It's taken care of. The other ones um, that are historic, mandatory. it's not mandatory, but it's it's best practice. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. But right. Which one is that? The one. That yeah. The boys club needs. Yeah. But they've said they would agree to. Yeah. Something. They. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they said so, they would agree. I, we just have to figure out a form. But the historic restrictions, as you're talking about, are the com very complicated ones that require paying, you know, somebody to write the restriction because they have to document the architectural features and all of that. But do, do we, we have, have to, to do, do that? that? No, we do not. If we don't have to, then I don't want to do it because we don't have that. We don't well, have the expertise. Well, I mean, I think that's a variable in the funding right it's like okay i might feel one way about voting for something that has absolutely no restrictions on how they're going to use the property in the future i might feel differently if they're 
is some restriction. But well, I think one of the mistakes, one of the lessons we've, I think we've learned is we need to put more of this on the applicants. Well, that's why my suggestion was that the applicants would budget in the cost, so that it would come out of their budget. And I spoke with Crystal, and she seemed to think that that would be okay. So, yes. well, and we may so, be, but but it's too late for this year. Well, not I don't know if it's too late. We I could mean, just tell them you need to, you know, either they could slightly increase their request, or they could they just you know, pay it out of their pocket. We might be borrowing trouble here anyway, be because the, the city historical project is irrelevant. I think it's 300 to 500. Uh, we don't have to ask the city for the lanterns, for the cemetery, for the stained glass windows. Those are historic projects, but they're city-owned. We don't need to get restrictions for them. Right. We're, we're not sure we're going to even go with any the of the lanterns, others. Right. They don't need a yeah. yeah, so far the ones that for the preliminary consensus, I don't think require anything. Yeah, right. it's, it's, you know, and, for the and, others. And that can be a that discussion when we That may be a factor in yeah. whether we're voting up or down. Like, how yeah. complicated is this I think that's true. I, as I think our that's first true. go round mm -hmm. of funding, it's like... Because that also brings up the question of admin funds, you know, because yes, if there does. aren't enough admin right. funds yes, to does. do a complicated project, it may not be a good thing to consider for this and, funding and, round. And one thing about the law department, um, they need to do their homework about it. To right. help us, That's and right. they need to go online to yeah. the coalition. yeah. She knows about it, and I've go been in communication with her. How those things were done before yeah. by other cities and towns, yeah. and they can just copy it, so it's not like it's. So, are we meeting uh, next 13th, week or not? The thirteenth. So we're not meeting next week. No. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not going to be here, but I. Okay. Yeah, so we're meeting three thirteen. How about three twenty? I, I I'm let's I'm just, home that day, so I, I can't do that one either. Let's. Let's just, let's just go wait one meeting at a time. And see what we but I think it would be better to pencil in some dates so that we are on track for you to you know to work on drafting the recommendations so that they get done on time. So that's why I'm trying to you know put in some dates like at least you know. Well, you can start working on the ones we already did preliminary. <laughs> What are we going to write? The preliminary on? ones, you could start writing the drafts on those. And but I mean, I, you don't think it's a good idea to at least set aside those dates so that we know that you know we have something on the calendar? Because what if then we wait till the 13th and oh no, I can't do it then, and then you know we don't have time to well, go over it. Whether they can back into the 20th. Yeah. Let's just start with the 13th. We, I, mean, I hear what you're saying. It's also getting late. And, and there's and, and four, there's, four there of us here now. Any day that we can use? I mean, I, I think I can't do the 27th. There better be five or six. Yeah, I was going to say what? every Wednesday up till the end of um, March. And so and those three I can't do. Okay. Oh. But what's the, what we got the 13th March, nailed right? down. Yeah. Okay, it's up to you. The, you're in charge. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? All in favor? I I guess. There we go. And then Thank I you. would take a look at.